going to talk about preventing the misuse of biotechnology, starting off with a story about a Greek goddess named Persephone. Now, Persephone was an innocent. She um, spent her days collecting flowers, wandering the fields, until one day she saw a flower that was more beautiful than any other, and something that she'd never seen before. But just as she went to reach for it, the earth opened up from underneath her, and Hades came out of the earth. He whisked her away, brought her down to the underworld, and forcibly made her his queen. And Persephone was able to come back to Earth for part of the time. But she was never fully free of the underworld, and she had always to go back there for at least part of the year. So, sort of like Persephone, biological science has been largely innocent of those who wish harm on others. Um, biological science has involved the collection not just of beautiful flowers, but of alluring concepts and novel ideas. It has given us great achievements in medicine and in knowledge, but like Persephone, biological science can be kidnapped for evil intent. I think all of us have helped to sensitize the scientific community and the national security communities about the fact that there is an issue, there is a security problem associated with advanced uh, biotechnology research that has to be addressed by both of these groups, uh, by the scientists who um, generally see their work as being benign and also by the policymakers, but not in a way that um, is, is, is burdensome and ultimately counterproductive. We need to be thinking much more carefully than has been done so far about ways to prevent the misuse of biotechnology without stifling beneficial research. And there are really three kinds of problems that you need to be concerned about. One is that somebody would deliberately misuse uh, biotechnology research. An alternative possibility is an unexpected outcome, that they would be doing something that was at the edges, really, of scientific understanding and suddenly present or produce a result that was much more dangerous than they anticipated. A third possibility is that you'd have a scientist who was doing purely legitimate work for purely beneficial purposes, but that by publishing the research results of that, they would put out information that somebody else could then take and use for much more devious purposes. Another example of a field that's vulnerable to the Persephone effect is uh, viral pathogenicity. So it is now possible to make infectious viruses without actually starting off with infectious material. And you can do this with um, a couple of different ways. One is by downloading the sequence of the virus you're interested in off of the internet and synthesizing it using a very commonly available piece of a laboratory equipment called the DNA synthesizer. And then you can make your, um, your genetic material of your virus that way. We have to get an enormous amount of information about where biological activity is conducted, conducted legitimately, where select pathogens are handled, who has the kind of equipment that facilitates the development of biological weapons, where is this equipment moving, why is it moving from here to there, what is its purpose. We have to know the personnel who are especially adept at handling these select pathogens and perhaps making them into weapons. We have to gain an enormous amount of information on the biological activity that is out there and we have to be able to integrate that information with the enormous amount of information we have about terrorism, international crime and weapons proliferation. As you know, biological weapons can be highly destructive and disruptive. They're cheap, accessible, easily hidden, especially compared to nuclear weapons. And our highly mobile society could make any contagious disease much worse. Um, so biology is really a very powerful technology, but in a lot of ways it's not powerful enough in that we cannot necessarily counter all the threats that could come at us at this time or in the, in the near future. Legitimate biological research should obey strict standards to prevent diversion of biological materials. Transfers of such agents should be limited to licensed agents. Every nation should make it a crime to handle plague, anthrax, etc., etc., unless one has a license to do so. And every nation should regulate how these pathogens are handled, 
by whom the conduct of biological research, transfers, and licensing of biological personnel. But the objective of increasing biosecurity needs to involve the scientists who are doing research in their laboratory and are participating in that culture. A governance system should be organic to the culture and practices of science. It shouldn't be externally imposed. You want to make sure that you preserve the system that has worked very well to give us medicines and other beneficent um, results. And the dangerous science can only be controlled by its practitioners at the fundamental level.